Greetings all, I am in Finland, I'm in Parola at the Pansari Museum or Armour Museum, they have it in English there on the side, happy enough. And yes, this is another high speed tour. Uh, two differences, one, I have turned on stabilisation on the camera, I did that for the American one as well but nobody seems to have noticed, but uh, yes, I have stabilisation and it is on. Uh, secondly, I'm actually not doing this entirely on my own. I got a couple of uh, tagalongs by the name of uh, Carl and Nico, and if I make any ridiculous errors, I am sure they will correct me. So you start in the parking lot and you go get your tickets. You got your prices, and away we go. Get your tickets here from the nice man and into the first hall. Usually you go through the gift shop at the end of a museum, but apparently they decided to do it at the beginning here. And the first hall starts with the first Finnish tank. Guess what they had as the first Finnish tank? Yes, they got about three dozen FTs. Somewhat empty inside. And like God knows how many other countries, they also picked up a cardinoid. And then you start to see a bit of a theme. Vickers and T26. So six tonner with the 37, T36, uh, quite T26 with the 45. And well, let's see if we've got the builder's plate on this one. There you go, 1938. Built in Newcastle upon time. And you're just gonna see a whole bunch of T26. Now everything in this room runs and they take them out a couple of times a year. They have special uh, moving days, usually with a theme, like a World War II theme or a, uh, a Cold War theme or what have you. So a couple of Soviet armored cars, a BA-20 on the near side and a BA-10 on the far side. They're not in, because they are in drivable condition, I mean, they're not in awful condition, but neither are they entirely complete. But still, where else are you going to find a BA-10 in the Western world? And then, of course, the other theme of Finland is Stumgeschutz. So apparently, out of 50, 55 or so Stumgeschutz that the Finnish got, 30 of them, or over 30, 35 of them are still in existence. T-3485 and a T-3476. You'll notice that the fins have put a muscle brake on the end. And nobody I've asked has been able to tell me why. Because obviously you would have thought that if it needed one, the, the Soviets would have put one on. An Anti-2, based off of a Landsberg chassis. They got six of these and about five of them are still in existence. All six survived to the end of the careers. A cut open Stungeschutz, complete with radios inside, fire control system, missing the armor panel at the top, and the driver's position. So, again, you know, people complain about cutting open old German armor like the Americans do, but a lot of countries will open up their vehicles, especially when they were still in service, to be used as training aids. See a bunch of pictures around uh, display cases, uniforms, models of tanks. Uh, the information is in English as well as in Finnish and Swedish. And it goes through basically everything of the Finnish Armored Corps. And the history of how do you destroy tanks? Well, at least part of the history because there's more of it around the corner. So you see all the various different types of anti-tank rifle down to the 20 millimeter. A tractor. I seem to have lost my, uh, I seem to have lost my accompaniment. Oh well. From one hall into an open area. Now the Finns did not use the pig or the ferret. Uh, in home service, but they did use them in peacekeeping missions overseas, which is why they are located here. 
They had just over two dozen of these ZSU 57-2s. And under here is presumably some form of engineering variant of the T-55. And so we enter hall number two. There they are. Come on, lads, catch up. It is the middle of May. It's a reasonably pleasant 15 degrees. Surprisingly brisk up here. I was in continental Europe a couple of days ago and it was in the high 20s. So of course the Finns had a combination of Eastern and Western equipment. You start off with this BMP-1 with uh, an AT-5 up top. Uh, but you can see they've also modified it with a uh, flare launcher, a Swedish Lyran for illumination. Next to it, a Leopard 2A4, and this one is basically never used by anybody because the whole number is 2013, so it's Leopard 2, number 13. And it doesn't have all the latest features, so when it came from Germany, uh, according to the sign on the front, it had a uh, ridiculously low amount of mileage. Don't, I don't think it says offhand. Uh, Oh, actually, 20,000 kilometers. That's, that's actually a fair bit for an early Leopard. Uh, but once it got to Finland, uh, because it was an older tank, they never used it. So they just parked it. They bought it. They parked it. And it sat there uh, for, in storage for about 15 years until finally it came to the museum. But after looking into the turret, it is uh, completely intact inside. So it would be interesting to see a very early Leopard 2A4. And it'll also be interesting to do a compare and contrast with the one I saw in the Austrian Museum, which is also uh, fairly complete inside. T-72 M1, uh, of course, Finland replaced the T-72s with the Leopard 2s. Uh, I'm told that they didn't get the good ammo. Uh, 2S1, cut away again, so you can see just how big this engine bay is in the hull. And then the cutaway T-54. And the BMP-1 turret. And see the autoloader mechanism for the rounds. So here we have a Patria AMV. I'm not quite sure what it's doing in a museum already. Why is this in a museum, lads? Mm, it's a prototype model. Oh. It's not a production model. I think it's call number one or two. Mm. Very modern looking vehicle. Pre-production, okay. It's, it's, like, it's not like a prototype, it's more like a... a low-rate like, initial production. Yeah, when, when, the, when the factory starts to product, product, produce those vehicles, that's the first one that came from the production line, and then they start to uh, officially build those vehicles. Gotcha. So Irish folks will recognize the Sisu XA180. Surprisingly roomy inside, actually. It's quite a large vehicle. and an upgraded T-55, which you can see they put a new uh, night vision system for the gunner. They put a thermal sleeve on the main gun. Again, a Lyran launcher uh, for illumination at night. And I'm told good ammunition, which was actually more effective than the ammunition on the, at least more powerful than the ammunition on the 125 that they had, now, at least for AP rounds. So these two vehicles were effectively competitors to the Patria, uh, Valmet uh, 1912 and the VK, uh, well, it says Yuko, did not enter service. These are two prototype vehicles, which you will only see here. 
it seems to be the driver's compartment for the Patria. Do I have a, do I have a light? Or did I leave that behind? I left it behind. See what was in that container, nothing interesting. Sighting system for something we haven't quite figured out what. Oh, hang on, it says 2S1 on the right there, so it's, it very well could be a 2S1. A couple of engines and a bunch of radios. And up we go. So a lot of countries, for example, Sweden are notorious for this, will take an old tank turret that they've de decommissioned the tank and they will turn it into a fortification. The Finns didn't quite do that. They bought old tank turrets directly from the, from the Russians or Soviets and turned them into coastal artillery pieces with a fire control system. They call it the 100 TK. Let's have a quick look inside underneath. Ah, it's been completely emptied. Never mind then. The T-54 had a, T-72 had a bad day. Oh. So according to this, impact number one, experimented welded hull. Okay. Impact number two, a 125 millimeter. Uh, three BM-15. Uh, three BM-15 was impact number three. That went through the mantle, it looks like. 30 millimeter HEI, I presume from a BMP, or number four, which was on the right here. I see one just went through the uh, periscope mounting. Number five was another 125, which did not go through. The T-55 had a much less, uh, less good day, or T-54. So, number one was a 100 millimeter round. Yep. Number two was a 100 millimeter round. Uh, three was a light recoilless rifle. Two hits and penetrations, number three. This is a lovely display. A uh, four and 10, 57 millimeter AP from an SU-57. Four and 10. Well, that, went, that certainly got through. Oh look, there's one that bounced. Note to self, don't get shot in the rear by an SU-57. Uh, six, two hits by 57, no penetration. Seven, heat rounds. And eight is more of a coilless rifle. Okay, there's your seven heat rounds. Good Lord, one on earth was nine. Hit by 100 millimeter hit, uh, heat. Hit by the 100 millimeter heat directly onto the penetration hole from the 100 millimeter KE. No impacts to the stabilizing wings. Oh yeah. We have a hull with lots of engines. Going from the T20 Consumalettes, the FT, complete with the uh, gearbox and steering it should be said. This guy comes out of the T28. Uh, T50, oh, that's where the T50's engine went because I looked inside it and it's completely empty. T34. Uh, and some interesting ones down here. So this comes out of the Stug, it's in my back. Uh, 
This comes out of the Landsberg and the Comet. And on the other side, you have all the transmissions. So this transmission comes out of a uh, 2S1. And these blokes. T28 transmission. Chariot here. The Landsberg again. T34. Your guess is as good as mine. And up we go. The next level. Now until about 2017, 2018, all these vehicles were in open air storage, which you can imagine in Finland is not the, the kindest weather. Then all of a sudden there was this crowdfunding campaign, 40,000 euro came in from Japan and uh, amongst other things and they were able to build a couple of pavilions to at least keep the snow off. So this is a trailer for an FT, actually you can see up the top there, where's that image, there it is, the trailer in use. And then you have a salvo of T26s and Vickers 6 tons. So that T26 over there has the conical uh, correction, a cylindrical riveted turret. So it's a model 1933, an early one. This is an actual Vickers 6 ton because you had to build this plate. A flamethrower variant of the T26. Another model 1933, except this one has a welded turret roof. So you can compare this one, look at the, the roof line of the turret with this one over here. A late model T26, you can see that one is almost completely welded, has a new turret, T60, a T70, and a T50. They never made met very many of these T50s. Uh, the only other one I've seen is in Kumika. It was actually a very, very good light tank, it has to be said. Uh, this one has additional armor added onto it. Unfortunately, it's as near to empty inside as makes no difference. I'd like to be able to say the same for the T28. Uh, well, we saw the an engine in the shed. It could or could not be from this, but unfortunately we can't open the hatches of most of these. Uh, that said, I'll be very curious to see what the KV looks like. He just opened it up for me. KV-1E, uh, Ekranomy, or something like that is pronounced. It's the... Uh, add-on armor variant of the KV-1. This is the only such vehicle which exists. And another KV-1. So what's it look like inside? It's in good, it's in good nick? It's in nick. It's still there, but I don't know if it is. Is it in good nick is the question. Yeah. All right, three, two, one. There we go. Let's see. I, I did not bring my light. Let's try with my phone. Well, this, actually, this has got good low light. So there is no turret basket. There's ammunition racks on the floor. Yeah. Uh, don't know if I can see a sight or anything. Uh, come on. No. One of the reasons I bought this camera was it was good for low light. But uh, no. I've seen worse, but I've seen a lot better. Mm -hmm. I don't see any of the gunner's controls. I see a couple of pedals, trigger pedals. You want to go all the way inside? Nah, it's not worth it, okay. especially without a light. <laughs> yeah. But now we know that the turret will open. So this is the, this is the first time I've been able to even look inside a KV turret yeah. because the one in Bovington is quote unquote radioactive. Yeah, well. The one in Fort Lee, <laughs> we just can't figure out how to open. It's frozen in place. The ones in Russia, well, I'm not going to get it to any time in the next God knows how many years. It's a rather empty T-34. So again, they have a, a whole slew of T-34 variants. So we have a Model 42, Model 43. The 43, as I recall, was formerly German and was purchased by Finland um, to make up the numbers of the T-34 fleet. T-34 
3485, ISU 152, and then the star of the show, the BT-42. And this, of course, was why the Japanese contributed 40,000 euro to build these pavilions. All the, all the hatches are locked, or at least frozen in place, and it'll take a lot of work to open them. Looking into the ports, uh, there seems to be some stuff left inside, but not a hell of a lot. Big blocky things, so these back doors don't open. They're fro I don't know, maybe you need pry bars and WD-40 or something. But there you go, the BT-42. Now, courtesy of donations, in overhead cover. So a Stu 40 and a more traditional Stug. You can see the one has the rather uniquely finished uh, machine gun shroud. Also directly above the driver's port, if you compare with the driver's port on this one, uh, you see they have a, a shade basically. And you'll also see the different mantlets. So this is the older square mantlet, and this has the, uh, the Saukov uh, pig's head mantlet, I guess. And the pans are four. Apparently the Finns bought about 50 of them. T55 AVLB, chariot here. Oh, uh, correction. Oh, is it a chariot here? And the Sherman. Of course, Finland did not use Shermans, uh, but they acquired one. Yet another T26 hiding in the back in Winter War colors. I have no doubt that that would provide an interesting uh, case point, case example. If you come around this in winter and there's snow on the ground everywhere, you come around the corner and see how long it takes you to spot the tank in uh, the white tank against the white background. And up to the last pavilion. As you get off the freeway, uh, you'll see two vehicles. One is the uh, Leopard 2, which is easy to spot, but you have to look very hard on the opposite side is a uh, another Stug. Pack 40 in a defensive position. Come up the trench line. Another back 40. And an armored train. However, they got that up here. Well, the track looks like it's going Let's go around the corner. Look at the smokestack on that. If it was an American local, I would say it was indicative of a wood burner. And in fairness, there is no small amount of wood in Finland. It's quite a complete armored train.
And so we come to the final pavilion up top. Starting off with a comet. Then the chariot here. 20 pounder. T72, this one with the mine plow. This is a driver training vehicle for the TEL. Um, I think it's the SA6 or something. Whatever that missile is in the background. The first Sisu armored car, apparently made for police service. Now this Patria is a, a 6x6, the finished ones are all 8x8, this was designed for export sales. Another Sisu, XA202, and a Patria with the Amos twin 120mm motor. This vehicle has been outside a while, it's in surprisingly questionable condition. Oh, that's why. Apparently it was a, a mock-up, if you didn't hear that. BTR-60, and one of two BTR-80s that Finland got for evaluation. Kind of curious to see what's in it. I see a, seems to be somewhat intact. I see an observation system there. No 14.5, obviously. So that's it for the top pavilion. I'm gonna switch off for a second and I'll come back to you in the anti-tank section. So as I'm coming back down, uh, just to revisit this one, I got thrown by looking at the arse end of the turret. It's, it's a comet. Just look at the gun. When you're doing things on the fly, you can make silly mistakes. So back in the parking lot, again, that's your entrance. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see an MTLB which is open, you can climb inside, send the kids to get tetanus or whatever else you want to do with a, ki a vehicle that's stored in the open. But behind it, it's kind of easy to miss, is the anti-tank hall. I don't know, maybe they shot it in, in, at night. Old Soviet gun of some description I don't know. And starting off with early attempts to destroy tanks. Reminded, of course, of the American attempts by throwing rifles in the tracks. I like the spare cogs. 37 millimeter. A guy with a drum kit. No, no, you're good, you're good. All right. So, a uh, Swedish 37, the, the wavy mantlet, uh, or gun shield, apparently gives that away. Uh, Soviet 45, another 45, and then a, uh, a very long Soviet 45. A little bit more muzzle velocity. Various anti-armor weapons used by the Finns from Panzer Schreck to Panzer Faust, uh, Faust Patron. Uh, the, uh, I can't remember what the, what the damn thing is called. You stick it on the end like a, a huge rifle grenade, a pilas. The American law, so they weren't completely averse to using American equipment. Uh, 74 of some sort. Uh, actually, they're both finished made and some ammunition. The, the really, really long one there is from the Pac-40. A couple of anti-tank guns. Uh, the spare wheel now in the trail position so you can drag it around without lifting it. Uh, five centimeter 
the Reboard French 75, and yet another PAC 40. Comes some of that's tractor, uh, T20, the Finns captured a lot of these things, impressed them in service. And an attempt to uh, make a new carriage for basically the German Pack 40. Obviously, not exactly what it says. Kind of, you take the, the basic concept of the gun and make a new low carriage for it. Very compact. A Madsen 20 millimeter. French 25, another 37 toad, and another 37. Last thing here, a couple of missiles. Vigilant on the left, uh, I think it's Spandrel. Sager and SS 11s from France. And that is basically it. Oops, there's a fall down the steps. That was your unofficial high speed tour of the Pansari Museo, uh, the uh, Finnish armor collection. Uh, again, you, you land at Helsinki Airport, you go north, uh, yeah, about an hour is about right, a little over an hour. Uh, it's right on the freeway, you can't miss it. Just, you'll, you'll see this massive Leopard 2A4 off of the side of the road, that's your exit. And, uh, right, hope you found it enjoyable and informative. Talk to you in the next one. So, yeah, uh, this is uh, KV-1, and you, you can see here there's the impact uh, impact point over here, and there's also uh, impact points over there, and ricochets on, on the turret. And the story goes: in 1944, the Finns were making a counterattack during the Tali Ihatala battles, and this tank and and another uh, tank, a T34 1941 model, uh, made made an attack along this road. There was a corner. This one tank went first, and it got shot by T-34 85s, Soviet T-34s. Uh, this managed to break off from that attack, but the crew was incapacitated. The driver was barely, barely conscious because they, the hit was quite big. So the Finnish T-34 went past this and drove it to the same, uh, uh, along the same road only to find those Soviet tanks uh, breaking off from contact. And the Finnish tank shot those tanks, and one of them was captured, and the one that was captured is there in the number one hole. And you can see the, um, the impact point where the uh, Finnish tank hit that, uh, that tank and penetrated the armor. But uh, the Soviet crew paled out, but the tank was still operational. So we just took it up as our, as our own and painted swastikas on the turret and pressed it in service on the spot. Uh, if I remember correctly, the engine only had uh, the meter in the engine said that it, that tank had only been driven for 30 to 60 hours. It was brand new vehicle when we captured it. But uh, but this this uh, is connected to that vehicle. In, the, in that way, and these marked scars are here to prove it. So that's basically the story. <laughs>